Study 18, The Obstacle of Overspending. Warning, marketers know you better than you know yourself. You might find that hard to believe, but in all likelihood, it's true. Promotion and sales have become more science than art in recent decades, leaving us more transparent than we ever thought we'd be. Market researchers and companies and universities have invested literally billions of dollars to understand consumer behavior, to know what leads you to buy something or to walk away. And that research has yielded remarkably sophisticated tactics to separate people from their money. Take it from a business professor. These people are data-driven geniuses. On one hand, this isn't a bad thing since it makes our companies more competitive and keeps people employed. In fact, if marketers and salespeople didn't enjoy some success, none of us would have jobs. But on the other hand, their fascinating science of persuasion has also helped create a culture of consumerism, a habit of discontent that engenders a habit of continually seeking more. Just look at all the recreational shopping we do, our delight when a new catalog shows up in the mail, the accumulation of stuff in our attics, basements, closets, cabinets, and garages, not to mention our credit card debt, our hefty car loans, our bloated mortgages. It all points to a lifestyle of overspending. In fairness, sophisticated marketing is not the only culprit here. Many of us, without anyone's help, have come to worship gods like comfort, convenience, and comparison, gods that ordain our overspending. We suffer from the lust of the eyes for worldly things, as John puts it. So if we are victims of brilliant marketers, we're sometimes willing victims. Now, what does all this have to do with busyness? The connections are not hard to discern. One connection is that our habit of purchasing luxuries amounts to almost a part-time job. We invest a lot of time shopping for the best prices and making purchases, as well as maintaining, fixing, and replacing all these things. A second connection to busyness is that our habits of spending and accumulation require that we work more to keep up with the bills. Many people work far too many hours because they've become trapped in the work and spend cycle I've mentioned earlier this week. Some people genuinely desire to reduce their work hours or take less taxing, lower paying jobs. They want to live a simpler life, but they can't because of their financial obligations. They're trapped, or so they think, working in jobs that are little more than golden handcuffs. Their good job simultaneously enables them and enslaves them. If anything that's been said here looks like the person you see in the mirror, let me suggest that you pick up two shields to defend yourself. First, equip yourself with a shield of sensitivity. Be sensitive to the fact that there are lots of people out there shrewdly enticing you to overspend. Be aware that you're vulnerable to the powerful current of slick marketing. It can subtly lure you into the cult of consumerism. Watch for it, and don't be duped into buying things you don't need. Second, and more importantly, equip yourself with the shield of stewardship. We touched on the concept back in week two when discussing appropriate use of our time. It's every bit as applicable here when discussing the use of our money. That's because it's God's money, and we're just stewarding it for him. Do you think of it that way with every purchase? The more you can remember that the dollars are his, the more likely you'll be to spend wisely, to be content with what God has given you, and to enjoy the blessings of a simpler life. Overspending increases overload. Stewardship increases simplicity. Think about it. How much of the busyness and complexity of your life is a result of shopping for, purchasing, returning, and maintaining luxury items? Items that you don't need to survive. For group discussion, how often do you think about the issue of stewardship when you're spending money? What can you do to maintain a stewardship mindset all the time? Talk to God about it. Reflect on 1 John 2, 15-17. Do not love the world or the things that belong to the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. Because everything that belongs to the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's lifestyle, is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever.
Take a few minutes and ask God to show you whether you have a problem with the cravings of worldly things or the lust of the eyes for worldly things. Ask Him whether He wants you to make any adjustments with regard to your spending. Your Freedom from Busyness Plan, Part 18 If God is asking you to scale back your purchases and to be a better steward of His money, identify three things you will do in the coming weeks to faithfully comply with His wishes.